how would you like to bring icon images to life and animate them inside your Camtasia edited videos? We're going to see how quick and easy it is to get icons, edit them, and animate them inside Camtasia. Here are the two example creations using social media icons that we're going to cover in this tutorial. Let's dive in. Hey, hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so that you don't miss a thing. Okay, so now we're inside Icon Finder, which is going to be the tool that we're going to use to grab the icons I use in the two examples. And the good thing to know is it's not the only choice. There's another site called flaticon.com and something called thenounproject.com. So those are other choices, but we're not going into them now, just sharing that with you. We're going to go strictly to my downloads, which are under here. Click on downloads. And as you can see, I have them here. There's these three icons here that you're going to see in example two, which are for Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and they were free. And then there's this icon here on the left side, which I'm using for social connection. This one cost me $1. So still, it's pretty affordable. And they have other plans, too, if you want to explore. So let's go into this. And now we're going to see what the icon editor is all about inside Icon Finder. Go to the max size, because these are, these are vectors. And we're interested in ultimately downloading PNG files. So we need to go into the editor. Click on that. Now we're inside the editor, and you can see that there's all kinds of individual components that make up this icon overall. We have the ability with the editor to do things like, you know, change the color if we wanted to of the individual components, which is very powerful and gives you latitude in your design to do some cool things. Let's just undo those changes. So with this design, we need to think about saving off individual PNG files for the components because those components we're going to use to animate inside Camtasia by applying behaviors to them. So as you can see here, there's all these individual social uh, elements outside of the computer set up. So first off, I want the computer by itself. So I'm just going to eliminate these other elements that are around here. There is no um, fancy multi-select feature. So now I could go into the download icon and click on PNG. Click. Whoops. Click. And as you can see in the bottom left, it just created a download file. Then I would undo to get rid of, um, to bring back all the icons I had. Next step would be to save off the individual items one by one. So if we're going to first go for the, the one with the, uh, the people. And then I would go and save the PNG file again, and we get another download. You go through a process, and you're going to save off all the individual components that are needed to make your animation design. Now we're back inside Camtasia, and as you can see, I've brought in all the individual PNG files. I've renamed them before I brought them in through the media import media function here. But you can see Facebook has the F and then the blue circle, Instagram has, um, I, I broke down the, uh, the icon elements into two pieces here for Instagram. So there's three all together with the background. And then all these other nice little elements here are for the social icon, the social connection um, element, which we're bringing. And I just, if I scrub here for you, you can see that uh, those elements are all in here. And in the second one here are the uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram icons. Okay, so let's do a quick walkthrough of each of these projects. Each one of these elements pops up, and they're about a second bit apart between each one that comes in. And what I've tried to do is just speed it up a tiny bit each, with each, each icon that I brought out, just to make it a little faster. I've got this nice little pop sound that comes in for each time we show the icons. Gives you an idea so that the sound is there in each one of them. Then what we have is the behaviors. And for the computer, we have the jump and fall when it comes in. So as you can see, it comes up from the bottom. And then at the end, you're going to see it shrink out. 
and we've actually modified the behavior slightly and we'll look at that in a minute but for each one of the icons that pops up I'm using the pop-up behavior and it says pop-up but you're gonna see how we tuned it and it's the same across the board all of the constituent elements that are used are all using the pop-up except for this top one here which is the text which is using the sliding behavior so for the computer as you can see after it bounces in there's no behavior and then eventually it shrinks out so we'll go look at that behavior click here look at the properties and on the inside meaning when it came in we saw it had the bounce in during there was nothing because it's it's pretty it's pretty well just staying still and then on the out we have a shrink and we, we saw that there now what's interesting is although we assigned the jump and fall behavior which was done simply by just dragging the the media element onto the timeline and then going to the behaviors and choosing jump and fall and dragging it on as you can see in here if we look at this the default behaviors for in during and out are are bounce in jump and and then drop on the out well what we actually used on the computer which we brought in which is here if we go into the jump and fall the in is bouncing but the during we set to none and the out we set to shrink and the reason we set the out to shrink was to be consistent with what we're doing with the other elements as they shrink so does the computer so what you need to, to appreciate is that when you first bring in and apply a behavior that sets a default behavior but you have the ability to override each element in here and all the subparameters and when you change that in essence the, the name up top of for what you originally uh, used as the behavior is really just there for you to go back to the to the default if you want so you could just click here and press the reset and then you'll see the in goes back to the bounce in jump and drop but we're gonna undo that because that's not what we had applied and what we had was bounce in none and shrink so the pop-up that we have has an in behavior of grow then during it has pulsate and for out it has shrink but if we go back to the default behavior for pop-up it has for in hinge during it has pop-up and out it has hinge again so as we can see we've pretty much totally redefined pop-up so don't be fooled by the labels now let's move on to example two before we go on to example two let's just have a quick replay of example one for you to see how it all came together again now let's just quickly play example two it's just five seconds long so you can have a reminder So example two is an outro and what we're going to do is look a little more closely now at the details on how this baby's put together so it's it's as I said just a little over five seconds in length and as you can see by the way I've designed it there's sound at the base level and then each of the layers above are the different social icons so these two layers here are Facebook then the next two layers are the Twitter and then the next three layers are Instagram and then above that is the text layers that you see combined with the same sound effect put throughout so just showing a quick scrub through as you can see that the icons start in the center position and they're spinning out and then they go into place so this first animation which has the beginning and end keyframe locations is actually just a half a second long as you can see here by looking at the playhead under duration you see 15 frames so I made that a half a second long all, all the rest of the animations as well in here at the beginning and end keyframes are similar the same thing they're just 15 15 frames apart so all the animation elements last a half a second so the first animation point is to bring the icons all from a center position out to to the place where they're resting and then as you can see the first icon the F is still spinning and then so that was for this animation that's the spin for the for the F in uh, Facebook then right away 
from, from the tip to the tail of the next one, now you see Twitter spin. And then from the, the tip to the tail of the Instagram stuff, now you see the Instagram stuff spin. So you can see by design, I've lined up the animations one after, after the other. Now, these are all, you know, just 360 degree spins. So for example, when we started out here, I, I go from zero to 360 and it's a end and it's a clockwise spin. So if we look more closely at the descript the, the definition of the properties here, you're going to see that I, for the end keyframe, I put here minus 360 degrees on the Z axis for the spin. So that goes from zero and you see it's spinning clockwise. And then at the end keyframe, it ends at 360. Because the spin was one circle around to continue in a clockwise manner. And because it's the Facebook element, we now need to extend the spin to now go to 720. So we've now doubled the size. So the Z axis now goes to 720. So you can see there it spins a second time all by itself because that's the only location for that animation. Likewise, next, after the Facebooks come in, we do the same effect for, for Twitter. So it's at 360 after the first spin. And then the end keyframe here for the Twitter is minus 720. So likewise, the same principles applied to the Instagram ones as well. So now you can see how easy it was to just work with a Z axis rotation to get the spin effects and the timing of them. Now, what I did as well was deal with the text in a way that I, I actually, f before I finished the spin, the second spin of the first one, you can see the text is coming out, but right here where the keyframe starts for, um, for Twitter, for the spin, I haven't finished painting the text for the first one for the Facebook, it's still in progress. And then as the Twitter element is spinning, okay, by the time it gets to the end, you can see the text isn't finished spinning, um, the, sorry, displaying, and then I've already started now onto the Instagram spin. Now, what you find is this, this just flows nicely, and we're gonna just play that part again. Let's look at the Facebook situation to see how the behavior worked. So if we click on the behavior here, you're gonna see we used scale, and on the in, scale is grow, at the during, there's none, and then on the out, there's a shrink. So when it's doing a grow, it went from small in the middle, the original size that I had put it on screen, and then it grows out to the, to the, the full size. And then while it's in the middle, it's doing nothing. As you can see, it's static. And then it's going to start to shrink near the end. So so it does a like a sort of a fake grow and then shrink right away. So as you can see, that behavior is applied consistently across all of the, the um, icon elements because they all are moving in sync. For the text of each one, I used what's called the reveal behavior. It's the same for all three of them. And in the reveal behavior here, if we go and look at the properties, the in says reveal, the during says none, and the out says shrink. Again, shrink is there so that everything is consistently shrinking. But in the actual default for the reveal, if we go look at that by resetting, you see there's reveal in and then during none and out has a reveal as well. Well, we change that to a shrink and that's the only difference in terms of how we uh, adapted that behavior. In this second example, I also used a sound effect and some music. And um, one of my favorite sets of music that's actually a pay set, but the, 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 the compositions are great. It's called the Video Hero Music. And there's actually a link in the description below for you to look at that one. But I have this piece here. It's called Shooting the Breeze. So that's the underlying music track. But in addition to that, I have um, a sound two, two, two additional sound effects. And as you can see, to start out, I have this really cool whoosh sound that gives a, a flow, a feeling of, of, of motion with how the, and it syncs with the icons flying out from the center. And then that's followed by a little camera shutter sound because we're spinning. It's kind of giving you the same kind of feeling that you would get or from, from a sound standpoint when, when, when a shutter 
clicks with each one of those spins. So let me just play that little bit for you can, so you can hear how that all comes together. And that's it for uh, the sound design. Wow! Animating icons in Camtasia using custom animations and behaviors are great ways to enhance your creative video editing repertoire. If you want to look more closely at the examples in this video, you can play with this exact Camtasia project by downloading it now. All you have to do is click on the link in the YouTube card or in the video description below. If you're into video editing and creating videos and you want to learn more tips on how to succeed with video and video marketing, then be sure you hit the subscribe icon on this page. I'll see you in another video soon.